Hello guys, in this video we're gonna take a look at how to fetch data uh, from an API with React. For this project I'm uh, using the create react app command. If you haven't got that installed yet, you can go ahead and install it by typing npm install g for global and then create react app, all right? So just go ahead and type this and you need node, uh, of course, enabled uh, to be able to do this. But as I said, I, I've already got it uh, installed, so I'm just gonna type create react app to create a new project and let's just name this react api and let's just wait a couple of seconds for the project to be created so the the reason you probably want to fetch data from an api there are multiple cases but for example when logging in to a login system in your application you might uh, want to be able to uh, fetch all the users or you might be able, want to be able to fetch uh, product, products from a database or any kind of data uh, from an API basically. So that's the what we're gonna take a look at doing today. So now the project uh, was created. I'm just gonna go ahead and see it into uh, the, the React API. I'm gonna hit the npm start to start the application up and this will start the application in my Chrome browser. As you can see, and uh, there we go. Now it just started. So now I'm just going to open up the project in Sublime Text. Uh, I have already prepared this, so I'm just going to open it up like that. Then I'm going to go to Source inside the newly created project, and I'm going to open up app.js, and I'm going to go to View. Uh, syntax and I'm gonna change the syntax to JavaScript Babel and now if you haven't got this installed in uh, Sublime uh, you can just Google how to install it and there's uh, tutorials for how to do that it's very simple so I'm just gonna change the syntax I'm also gonna change the indention to tab width 4 and fix that it makes it a little bit easier for you to read like that and let's just remove all the code inside the div with the class name of app we can also get and remove the logo and the app.css because we won't be needing them so let's just open up the application and see that everything works fine yeah i'm also gonna open up the console so i can get the output of errors if we get any errors all right so let's get started. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a constructor function at the top. So we just uh, type constructor and passing the props. I'm going to say super props. And then we're going to start by defining the state of this application. We'll be using two states. This dot state equals with items, which is an array of the data we're gonna fetch from the API. And also is loaded, with, which is a boolean. I'm gonna set it to false, and we're gonna use this uh, is loaded state uh, to, um, to be able to know when the items have been loaded from the API endpoint, all right? You will see how it works later. So now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a component did month uh, component did mount, mount function uh, like that and inside the component did mount uh, method we're gonna create the actual API call all right and we're gonna use the fetch method inside react for this so you're just gonna type fetch and it takes um, a first argument of the URL of the API, all right? In this case, we're gonna use this uh, simple uh, example uh, API. This is just dummy data. Uh, that's good for testing. So you can just visit this uh, URL in your browser and copy it. And as you can see, it's just uh, one array of multiple JSON objects, all right? So I'm just gonna copy that in to the argument of the fetch 
function. Then we're gonna type it then. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get the results, so res, this is the result from the API. And we're gonna convert it to JSON format. So rest.json, okay. The next thing we want to do is uh, we want to take the JSON that we just form formatted and uh, create an arrow function like that. And I'm using arrow function here to not lose context of this, which we will be using to set the state up here, all right? Which we're gonna do now. So that's why I'm using the ES6 arrow function. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna actually set the state with this set state. And we're gonna say is loaded. True, all right, that's true, because we just got the data from the API here. So the data has been loaded. And we're also gonna set the items state, all right? So let's set it to JSON, okay? Which is the data that we just got from the API here. All right, so now we're actually getting the data from the API. And we're not only getting the data, we're actually saving it inside our app component inside the state so we can reuse it inside the component okay and that's great so now the way this works is uh, the component did mount method actually runs after the render method and as you might know the render method is responsible responsible for producing the output of the application so the way it works is uh, the render function runs after the component did mount function. Oh, sorry, the component did mount uh, method runs after the render method, all right? Then updates the render method so we can produce, uh, or so we can output the results here. Sorry, I'm messing that up a little bit. It's not as complicated as uh, I make it sound here, uh, but that's how it works, all right? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here to the render method and we're gonna say uh, uh, variable then we're gonna access the properties inside the state. So we're gonna say is loaded and then items equals with this dot state. Now we can access the is loaded and the items up here all right without calling this dot state before and then we're gonna say uh, if not loaded so if not is loaded let's just return a div that tells the user it's loading all right so loading like that and um, if it is loaded so else Let's just return something to try it out. Uh, let's say data has been loaded. And let's just update uh, the application now, see if we get any errors. No, it seems to be working. So as you can see, the uh, data has been uh, loaded, is outputted. So now what we want to do is we want to be able to loop oral data and output it to the application, right? So what we're gonna do is let's create an uh, UL, which is an unordered list. And inside here, let's uh, loop the data and uh, create an LI element for each uh, object. To do this, we're gonna use uh, the JavaScript map function, which is written like this items not map, uh, and then we're gonna pass in the item, so like that. And let's close it off down here. Oh, sorry, like that. So we're using the JavaScript map function on our items, which you now know belongs to the state. All right.
Now the map function uh, actually what it does it creates a new array uh, a new array with the results of calling a function for every array element which this uh, lets us loop the each object from the API result all right and let's just say li then we're gonna use the key uh, attribute and let's just say item.id and the key attribute here is used by react to be able to know uh, which items have been uh, modified or uh, updated or removed all right so just like that and let's close off the li down here and then let's just say we want to output perhaps the name we can see here what we got in here so here we got the ID which is what we're using for the key right then we got the name username email address so let's say we want the name and perhaps the email so let's just say name and item of email and let's say name and email all right so now we get the name here and the email here and let's see if we're able to loop everything correctly and as you can see now we're actually getting the data from uh, the api and we're outputting it in the application through the render method all right so yeah that's uh, all you need to know in able to fetch data from an API with React. And just to clarify how this works, as I explained later, uh, I messed it up a bit when I explained it, but as I said, the way it works is the component did the mount uh, method, runs after the render method, then updates the render method, which lets us check here again if anything has been loaded or not all right so that's how you uh, fetch data from an api with react and output the results to the application i hope you learned something and bye bye